hey guys, now that we have a design that actually drives the logic on the fabric of the board or the PL, which is in the video below, let's go ahead and make a bare metal design that'll drive logic via the processor on the board or the PS. <laughs> So what we'll do here is we're going to start with create project. Most of the start out of this will look just like the previous design. So we'll click on next. Um, let's call this project PS logic and we'll click next. We're going to do an RTL design. Don't specify the sources at this time. Let's go through and find our board that we had uploaded in the other video. So we'll scroll down to that. Uh, this is the V2 version platform. We'll click on next and finish. All right, for this design, we don't actually have any sources to add. It's gonna be a very simple design. So let's just go ahead and start out with create block design. We'll let that name itself and click okay. And now with our block design loaded, we can add IP and we're gonna go ahead and put down the zinc, ultra scale MPSOC. Now from here, what we also want to do is we want to add a new IP and we're going to put down GPIO, which will bring up our Axie GPIO. Double click on that and it'll drop it down. Now we can run block automation. So we'll go ahead and do that. And we want to do that on here. Uh, that'll be our processor. We'll let that run through and then we'll do connection automation. Go ahead and click on all automation and the defaults are fine. Okay, let's zoom out on this design a little bit. And what you'll see is it set up our Axie and everything to drive the GPIO. So what I'll do, I want to go into the GPIO here. I'm going to double click on the box. And I really only want to use four of these GPIOs. So I'm just going to make this GPIO at four. Um, we can click on all outputs and then uh, click OK. Now I'm going to go ahead and stretch out this screen a little to make it easier to see everything. And what we want to do is click on connect, run connection automation again. Click OK. So that's basically it for the fabric of this design here. What we'll do, we need to go in here and go into sources, right click on design, and we're going to create an HDL wrapper. Click OK to let, and let Vivado manage all that stuff. And now that we have that done, we need to place our pins for this thing. So what I'll do is I'll go down and just run implementation. Uh, there is no net list, which is what we're trying to get to. So we'll click on OK here. And once we're inside the implementation design, we can pull out the I.O. window and assign all those pins. So let's go ahead and run this with four and I'll be back when it's done running. OK, now that that's implemented, let's go ahead and open the implemented design. And with that open, we'll go ahead and go up to window I.O. ports and that'll pop this down here. So from here, we can see our four GPIO pins. Um, they're all outputs. Uh, and they've got our, our package pins and of course our IO standards. We'll go ahead and change that. So what we're going to do is go find those pins. If you've seen the last video and already know that process, uh, you can skip ahead. If you just want a quick refresher, let's go ahead and go look at that here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Chrome. Now these links are down below and I've got this pin out up here uh, and it shows all the pins on that low speed pin header on the uh, Ultra 96. Uh, and this is just kind of for reference for me to see what pins I actually want to use, right? So what I'll do is just pick out a few pins on this pin header here. So let's go with uh, 28, 30, 32, and 34. So let's go ahead and start with 28. If I wanted to find how to connect 28 on the fabric here, what I want to do is go into the other web page, which I have linked down below, and we're going to go down and find the low speed header. So that should be down here. And it looks like this 40 pin LS expansion header. Now this is on page 13 of 18 of the document. So then I want to go down and look at 28 over here and it shows that it's connected to the MIO. So I want to skip anything that's connected to the MIO for now. So let's just go ahead and use say uh, 29 across the way, which is going to be HD GPIO six. And then we'll use 30, which is GPIO 13, uh, 32 is 14 and 34 is 15. So if we go back and look at this, we're going to use 29, 30, 32, and 34. So what we can do, I'm going to write, let me pull up a text editor and I want to write down these HD GPIOs. So we've got, so we've got HD GPIO six, and that's for 29. And then let's look over here. We've got uh, 13, 14, and 15 for 30, 32, and 34. Now that we have those written down, we can go find them up top. Um, what I'll do is just do control F and I'm going to look for HD underscore GPIO six. We'll start with that one. HD underscore GPIO underscore six. 
and we show it here up top is A6. So we'll write that down and we'll just go ahead and go do that process for the rest of them. Okay, now that we have that list showing what pins connect to what on the FPGA, let's go ahead and minimize this. Let's go back to our Vivado and we'll minimize this a little and, and make it so that we can see both. So what we want to do is label these accordingly. So let's go with uh, B1, we want to make that A6, then B2, we actually want that to be C7, and so on. Okay, now that we have those labeled, we can maximize this. And what we need to do is come over here. This leaves it at uh, default LVCMOS 1.8. Um, it is LVC MOS 1.8, um, but for some reason the default doesn't like to pull through. So I'm just going to go to the very top title here, and I'll click on that and bring down and drag this to LVC MOS 1.8, which is for 1.8 volts. That'll drop the rest of them down. Uh, and now we're done with that. All we need to do is go ahead and save and hit OK, and then we'll name it. I'll name mine pins. Now once that's saved, we can go ahead and close the implementation out. Click OK. Now from here, we're ready to go ahead and generate the binaries we'll need to run on the processor. So let's click on Generate Bitstream. And because we changed things, it'll go ahead and launch synthesis and implementation first. So we go ahead and do that. Click Yes. I'm going to use the max cores on here. Um, what I'll do is, is stop the video. I'm going to click OK, and I'll bring you guys back when it's done. So now that we've got our binaries created, let's go ahead and hit Cancel here. And we'll go up to File, Export export hardware make sure to check the include bitstream box and click ok now that exports our binaries to be able to be pulled up by sdk so let's go ahead and file launch sdk um, local to projects fine and click ok i'm going to go ahead and maximize sdk now that it's open and click on console and make sure that it's done processing everything that it needs to process and it looks like it's done at this time so let's go ahead and click minimize on that and since we're designing for the Ultra 96, we'll go ahead and hit File, New. We'll make a board support package for it. This will be a standalone package. Click Finish. And when it brings this up, we want to go into Standalone. Go to PSU UART. Make that PSU UART 1. And the same with the second one. We want to make that 1. And we'll click OK. All right, now that that's done building, we can go through and make File, New, Application Project. And we'll go ahead and start out with just the normal Hello World project. So I'm just going to name it HW. And we're going to make sure to use existing standalone BSP. Click on Next, not Finish. Uh, make sure Hello World is selected. And then click on Finish. Now, once Hello World is built, we can drop that down and look at the source code under HW and Source. And then we'll double click on Hello World.c. Now, that opens our Hello World program. So, this is where we're actually going to do the inputs and outputs and run bare metal programs. Now, to get to the I.O. for the program, what we need to do is go into our board support package and we're looking for a file called xparameters.h. So, what we're going to do is get into this PSU Cortex A because that's what it's running on. We'll go into our includes, and then we're going to go down and look for xparameters.h. Now let's go ahead and double click and open that. And we want to look down through this file for our Axie GPIO. So you've got all your commented headers here. See, this says it's for driver for Axie PMON. That's not it. We want to slide down through those until we find our Axie GPIO. And it should look like a new section like this. So we'll drag on down through the new sections. And we're looking for Axie GPIO. And you could just use search, but I'm a glutton for punishment. Here we go. So we've got Axie GPIO underscore zero. It shows that the base address here is A000000. And they've defined an actual term for this. So what we want to do, we'll just copy this term here. And that'll be our starting address for this guy that we need to point to. So let's go back into Hello World. And what we'll do in here is just paste this down so that we can keep track of it. And we need to make a pointer to it. So let's just call this an int star. And I'll call it LED Addy. And then we're going to make that equal to our base address. So essentially, this thing is just pointing at our base address. From here, we can go down and write like a simple code that will drive that base address. So let's make a while loop. And we'll just make this thing run forever. And let's point to that base address and make things happen. So let's go star LED ADDY. And we're only driving four LEDs here, but we have a 32-bit word. So we'll make that 0x and 8 nibbles. So that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Now at the very end of those nibbles, I just want to change the lowest four bits. So what we'll do is we'll make this last nibble an F, which is going to fill up all the bits on the last nibble. So if you want to know what that looks like in binary, we'll have 32 bits so and 8 nibbles. 
So, and that makes it easier for me to see what the hex value represents. So this last nibble here is gonna be F, which is 15, which is all of them at one, right? So we'll do this one, two, three, four, and that will turn on those last four bits. Now, if you remember, we only turned on four of the inputs, but the bank that actually comes out of the PS is going to be a 32-bit bank just because it's a 32-bit system. So we still have to have those 32 bits as a placeholder, and we could drive them with something else as long as we put them into the actual hardware design. This is just going to send this F to this pointer here, and that should turn on those four ports there. Don't forget your semicolon. Now, if I just turn them on, that wouldn't be very exciting, so I'm going to need to import an actual library that will allow me to do like a sleep here so let's include unistd.h and now we have access to the sleep function so i'll go down here in this while loop and i'm going to say sleep for one second and then what i want to do is go ahead and turn the things back off so i'll copy that over and i'll just make this zero which in binary with our last four logic outputs is going to be zero 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 and then what i want to go ahead and do here is go sleep one now with that simple program what we're actually doing is turning off and on outputs on the actual fpga and the gpio in one second intervals so it's like a two second wave here so you got on for one second off for one second from here what you can do is go back over here and if you're treating this just like the projects we did before you can just go ahead and upload the code to the board and then uh, run the program. What I'm actually gonna do with this is load this all onto a card so that it just runs statically off the card anytime you start it up. So if you wanna see that, watch the next video that should be coming out right after this. If you like this video, guys, don't forget to like, subscribe, comment down below, hit a notification bell. Have a great day and don't forget to love well.